Following on from our list, looking at the best war films of the 2000s, we're moving back yet another decade and looking at the best war movies made in the 1990s. Number 10, Before the Rain. Milcho Manchewski's Before the Rain crosscuts the stories of an orthodox Christian monk, a British photo agent and a native Macedonian war photographer to paint a portrait of simmering ethnic and religious hatred about to reach its boiling point. Made during the strife of the war-torn Balkan states during the Yugoslav wars, this gripping triad of love and violence is also a timeless evocation of the loss of innocence, and remains one of recent cinema's most powerful pieces on the futility of war. Number 9, Life is Beautiful. Roberto Benigni had a steady early career, but Life is Beautiful propelled him to international fame as the actor-director was nominated for almost every award imaginable. The moving picture centres on an Italian father and son who were taken to a concentration camp. Benini's character does his utmost to hide the situation from his child, making fun of patrolling officers and sending messages to his wife in another camp. It's a truly heartbreaking watch and about finding the beauty in the worst of situations. <laughs> Number 8, Stalingrad. This rare German's eye view of the conflict on the Eastern Front is an authentic glimpse of the hell that was Stalingrad, the turning point in World War II and one of the most brutal battles in human history. It's a harrowing and bleak viewing, but it's also an incredibly honest example of a film addressing a country's horror-filled past, honest and uncomfortable to the last minute. Number 7, The Last of the Mohicans. A reverence for history and a love for the material gives shape to Michael Mann's moody adaptation of The Last of the Mohicans, starring Daniel Day Lewis. Mann brings a typically obsessive attention to detail to the extensively researched film. Set at the height of the French and Indian War, Mohicans plays like the work of a director, trying to figure out what in all those images of combat and doomed love that moved him so much when he first saw the original film, how he could use his own voice to have the same effect on others. Number 6, Braveheart. Whilst Braveheart isn't the most historically accurate of films, Mel Gibson's epic about the life of William Wallace and his rise as leader of a Scottish revolution in the 13th century is a completely compelling film. Critics and historians might be more divided on its level of detail, but the sweeping beauty of Scotland, the brutality of the battle sequences and James Horner's incredible score make Braveheart a must-watch medieval epic. That they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Number 5, Three Kings. I can see a grain of sand in there and just can't get it out. I think this guy is a weapon! Yeah, he does! 
David O. Russell's Three Kings begins as a darkly comic heist film in which three soldiers played by George Clooney, Mark Wahlberg and Ice Cube try to make an easy score in the chaos at the end of the Gulf War. It develops into a tour of the human cost and unfinished business of that conflict as the three get drawn into the plight of refugees trying to avoid the wrath of the Iraqi Republican Guard. The film both captures and questions the spirit of the moment and previews this century to come, one that would erase the distance between the Middle East and the United States. I just want you to know. Know what? That I love you, okay? Tell me what's going on. Just tell Crystal. Troy? Tell Crystal I'm a rich man, and if things work out, she'll be taken care of, okay? I gotta go, Cody Bird, I love you! Number four, Underground. Underground depicts the life of two Serbian friends throughout World War II, the Cold War and the Yugoslav Wars. There's no denying Kusturic's technical virtuosity as he mounts one hectic, large-scale set piece after another. Starting in 1941 with the German bombing of Belgrade and moving through the post-war years to those of the conflicts that were still happening in Yugoslavia at the time of filming, Underground is a unique blend of lowbrow slapstick and sophisticated war commentary. <sighs> Number three, The Thin Red Line. My dear wife, you get something twisted out of your insides by all this blood, filth, and noise. One of my personal favourites, Terence Malick's adaptation of James Jones's 1962 novel based on the World War II experiences fighting in the Guadalcanal campaign changed shape significantly as it made its way to the screen. Malick's first film in 20 years, The Thin Red Line attracted the attention of established and rising stars alike, some of whom saw their roles reduced, or even deleted. Malick returned from his movie making absence in full command of his signature ability to capture wonder, but in depicting a kind of hell on earth, he uses that ability to disorienting effect. A war can put it out, conquer it, number two, Schindler's List. Yeah. Detailing the strife and desolation of the Jewish people during the Nazi occupation of Poland, Schindler's List focuses on Oskar Schindler, an industrialist who moves to Krakow to pursue a promising career, and who begins to witness the extermination of the Jewish people in the city, prompting him to shelter his employees who were targets of the Nazi forces. Produced for its majority in black and white, this historic tragedy is emphasised by the absolute hopelessness communicated through the cinematography. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honourable mentions that just missed the list. Dances with Wolves. Europa Europa. The English Patient. Maddox! Maddox! Gettysburg. Number one, Saving Private Run. The end of the 20th century stirred a great deal of reflection about what happened in the middle of it, particularly during World War II. Steven Spielberg's Saving Private Ryan opens with a harrowing recreation of the landings at Omaha Beach, offering a first-person view of the chaos as it unfolds. It's such an extraordinary sequence that it often overshadows the film that follows, which masterfully depicts the experiences of a handful of soldiers led by Tom Hanks' tough Captain Miller. The results are wartime experiences without a hint of romance or nostalgia. It's clear-eyed about the realities of warfare and even questions the group's mission that's less a crucial operation than a PR exercise. God grant me strength. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for our next video in the series looking at the best war films of the 1980s.